Hello. Today we're going to show you how to add new doors into the access control system. What we're going to do is we're going to first of all log into the software and we're going to click on doors here. What we're then going to do is we're going to click on detect control units at the bottom there. What the unit will do then is it will try and locate any panels that you might have added or already have connected to your PC. Okay, so that doesn't work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the Net2 configuration utility. Now I'm using a USB to serial converter which I know is on COM3 so I'm going to apply that it will ask me to restart the server probably shut down the software as well and then it will restart So I'll restart the software. Now this time, if we click on the door, we can see that it's actually detected it this time. And as you can probably hear from the clicking in the background, it automatically updates the firmware on each of the ACUs, which can take a, a little while. And obviously, if you've got a lot of doors on the system, it will update each door in turn. And depending on how many doors and how big your site is, could vary how long it actually takes. So we'll just wait for that to finish doing its update. I have only got one online here, so it is doing it rather quickly. And once it has finished doing its update, you'll see over here in its status that it will go from updating with a percentage say how far it is through the update and it will change to OK. So we can see here the serial number of the door which is repeated there, what type of door controller it actually is, what version of software it's actually been upgraded to and now what we can do is if we quickly go through what I did on my other tutorials is that if we go to departments and we create a couple of departments let's say staff and cleaners and we're going to apply that And then we're going to go to time zones, which is in my tutorial number two. We're going to create a new time zone for cleaners. And we're going to make them be able to work between 9 and 12. I'm going to right click on the blue line there. I can copy the day. And I can right click and paste into each of the next working days that I want to be able to get the cleaner to be able to use their card 
we're going to apply and what I'm going to do is the staff I'm just going to let them use as working hours access levels we're going to create one I know what I'm going to have to do is I'll create a couple of extra doors here going to use this option here just to add in a couple of fake units which is going to show up with a red X because obviously they are not online normally they would show a green tick to show that it's online okay so now we've created them, I'm now going to go to access levels and I'm going to create a new access level. This was in tutorial number three. I'm going to create a new access level and I'm going to call it cleaners. Working hours I'm just going to use for general staff. And now we're going to add users. When we did the departments in the first tutorial, this is what the departments will actually do. Rather than opening this and having 200 staff coming down here now in a big list, we can branch them up into smaller, more specific files. So we could have cleaners, staff, MDs, managers, drivers, maintenance, and we can branch them all into being a little bit more specific so we're not having to look through 200 and odd members of staff or however many members of staff that you might actually have there so what I'm going to do because I haven't got a desktop reader is I'm going to just set up quickly this door is going to be a desktop reader so what I can do now is that if I go to any old page and just leave it what I can do now is I can get one of my pops show it to desktop reader And that will bring up the user page where you can enter all the person's details. So we're going to do test one. We'll put a surname Smith. And then the departments we can put into cleaners. The access level we're going to put as cleaners. And then all that's going to happen by you reading the card is it's going to put in the card number, which will be down here. This is basically the only information that you really need to put into the system is the first name and the last name, and the access level is the most important part, followed by your number that should be in here. If we click on Add User. Well, off on that page will then go blank. We can carry on adding cleaners here. It will remember this information that we've already done. But I'm not going to add another one just yet. So I'm going to close that. And what I'm going to show you now is if we now go to cleaners here, we can see that test one Smith is now in this list here. Now if we try and add another card what we can do with this one now if we do test 2 
and we'll call it Jones. We'll do we'll leave the department because I'll accidentally forget to put it into a department. And we're gonna put it as working hours because this is gonna be for your general staff. So again just check that it's put the token number down here and we're going to add the user. Now what that's going to do this time is rather than putting it in one of the lists that we made here for staff and cleaners in the department that we made earlier, if we then click on here you'll see that Jones is not actually in the list. But what we can do, rather than going back into it and changing any programming, if we just simply click on Jones we can actually drag it and drop it into the relevant department that we wanted them to actually be in. So now we can see that Jones has now gone into the staff list. Now if we open Jones we can see here that she's allowed to work to go through this door here during working hours. Now, what I'll try and touch on one in one my next demonstration is using individual permissions, which I'll explain in the next tutorial how that can actually be an advantage to you, especially if you've got, for example, a company secretary working for the director. Who might need access to the director's office but you don't want to make too many access levels what we can do is we can give we'll say Jones is going to be the company secretary and we'll show you how to make it so that you can give her an a, a standard access level but you can specifically tell Jones is allowed to use the MD's door so we'll follow that on to the next tutorial I hope that's of use to you. Any questions, send me a message and I'll see if I can help you out. Thank you.